Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and this is the Calm Marker Omni One. This is a really interesting laser that I've been wanting to get my hands on because it is a UV laser. This is different from your diode, CO2, and fiber lasers, um, and it holds a lot of possibilities for us. I'm excited to really get into this one today. I also have with me my sons, Benjamin and Owen. Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. Uh, so my boys, they're not little boys anymore. They're big, big, big boys. Um, straight-A students. They are in sports every single day. So for them, it's really hard to go get a part-time job. They really don't have extra time. So they recently launched their own laser engraving business out of the house here. And so I'm going to start incorporating them into some laser videos because, uh, you know, they're going to be learning with me and they're also going to be doing a lot of the legwork, which I'm excited to be able to pass off and, of course, spend time with my boys too. So let's get into the Marker Omni One today on Bittner Build. Before we get started on the review, I did want to mention safety. And on the channel a year ago, I committed to, I will not review laser engravers that are open without an enclosure. Because I believe that it's very important that all these machines come very safe right out of the box. Uh, I'm reviewing this machine because there are no UV lasers under industrial grade that are like 17,000 and above that have an enclosure. So uh, I'm making an omission on that today. But that's why I'm also starting this whole video off reminding you, you must wear your safety goggles with this. Uh, Commarker does sell this shield. This is not a replacement for goggles. But when I'm running this here in the shop, I will put the shield up as well as wear my goggles. Just in case somebody comes through that door over there, they're not exposed to it if I happen to be running the laser at that point. This is a Galvo laser. A Galvo, rather than having a head that moves around a gantry, has a series of mirrors that moves rapidly reflecting the laser light. This means this laser is incredibly fast at 10,000 mms. It has an accuracy of 0 0.0019 millimeters, which is an incredibly small point of light. This means you should get incredible details in photos and your engravings overall. The unit has a weight of 51.81 pounds and a workspace of 11.81 inches by 11.81 inches. The laser can raise 22 inches off the bed. This machine comes with a 150 lens and a 70 lens. The 150 lens covers a wider area of the bed, whereas the 70 lens covers a much more narrow space of the bed, but it is much more precise than the 150. We're now going to run a bunch of material tests. I'm going to use the library that came with this machine in Lightburn, so we're going to run all of these tests on Palmarker's recommended settings. But remember with all laser engravers, Recommended settings are only a good starting point. It will give you a good idea because every single material is different. Uh, the laser, based on where you live, based on how much you clean it, based on the humidity in the air, there's all sorts of things that can affect how your laser engraves on a particular material. So use this as a good starting guide and then go from there to find your own specific settings for your individual materials. Inside of Lightburn, if you want to add this library, you go to the Library tab, click the Load button. Uh, from your little USB stick, which in this case is called No Name, you have the Omni Material Library. And so I open that up. Now you can see that we have all of these items over on the side. I can click Anodized Aluminum, uh, and it's going to give me settings for this to do this. Again, these are basic starting points, but, um, you know, Starting points are better than nothing at all. With a UV laser, you're not always going to be able to see the tracing image, so you're going to have to use a fluorescent plexi in order to see that. Um, I would recommend that you use a lot of positioning jigs uh, with this machine, specifically because it can be hard to position an item with this plexi over top of it. This is a stainless steel label-wrapped tumbler. The presets called for four times passes and it really only needed one, so we ran it again on the other side. It came out really nice. Standard aluminum business cards, you can do these in any laser engraver, but I do have to say that it was very, very precise and clean on this one. Um, it definitely looked really nice. Here's a bitmap image on aluminum business card. Uh, this looks a million times better in person than it does on the video. In the video, it looks very grainy, but um, it looks very nicely texturize and gradient in person. Um, I'll definitely have to 
do some other bitmaps and show them up, but I think it did great with uh, phenomenal detail. You can get some decent depth on an aluminum can. You'll see that I do a couple passes here, and it actually gets pretty deep after about five passes. I was experimenting with some terracotta pottery here, doing a test grid, and then we took it over to, say, the kitchen. Uh, this is pretty cool, and this is also something that you can only do on a Galvo laser because of how high the lipped edges are if you were trying to use this with, um, you know, any sort of gantry-based laser, it would be striking the sides there. Next on bamboo, we did some depth testing first, just with the word bamboo. Bamboo can be a little bit tricky just because of it being fibrous uh, a material. And then moved it over to the front side and went for some color on that one. We kind of did the Italian manja pasta symbol there. A UV laser is going to do very well engraving on wood, and you might not have noticed yet, but anytime that I'm engraving on an organic substance in here, we're really not getting any residues. When you're using a CO2, a diode, and even a fiber when you're burning wood, you're creating a residue char outside of it, a little bit of a gummy substance that you then have to wipe off most of the time. But here, the UV laser is breaking the bonds. It's a very clean engraving every time. UV lasers are great for marking on jeans, and uh, actually my numbers for my test grid here are actually the perfect numbers. I had a frequency of 35 at a uh, Q pulse of 127, and so you'll actually get that white lettering like you see on the outside of my test grid here anywhere. So you could actually do a whole bunch of, you know, cool weathering effects on the jeans or even just, you know, logos, designs, and names and whatnot. Next, I tried it on a tightly woven silky polyester fabric that is covering a mouse pad armrest. Uh, it definitely marks the fabric without degrading the fabric, meaning that, you know, you're not going to actually go through it and be able to pull the fabric apart. But this particular one didn't really have much contrast, and so that is, might be this specific one, this specific color. You have to play around with that one. On this woven polyester material, we definitely got good color on the engraving, but it is a woven material, so you're going to want something with a smoother texture, uh, because woven will obviously impact the look. This did really well on your artificial leather patches that have the adhesive backing already on. Uh, I did several passes on this one. It got to be a very deep engraving, which was nice. I didn't have any residue and it got good color. So you have good contrast and depth on this. This is a great laser for using this product. Real leather, again, we got a really nice contrast right off the bat. Uh, it darkened with each pass thereafter got great depth in the engraving so there's a lot of options as far as you know how you can approach this type of material i went over to a darker natural leather and again you got high contrast in the beginning it darkens with each pass uh, this one i also did a cut pass on and it cut so clean this is definitely the right laser from all of the lasers in the lineup to use for leather products the UV gets amazing contrast on slate. I really, really like it. Uh, it's not getting very much depth, but it definitely is ablating the material because you see that little dust up at the top. Uh, when it does its second pass here, I really didn't see a huge change, but you see that dust moving along with the laser as it goes across. Cork came out fairly well, though. I think you'd probably want to up the settings on this one to be a little bit more powerful uh, just to get some more... Uh, darkness to it. It did four passes and it was still a little bit light compared to the other coasters that were running. The ceramic coaster was another one where it came out really nice. As you might have seen right at the beginning there, we could see the actual laser beforehand, so it was great per, for positioning. Uh, it has great color, great contrast with just one pass, but it does get darker as we continue to go and you can see that little dust moving along with it as it ablates the top of it. This does super well on plastics, 10 seconds, one pass, great results. On some pressed cardboard, we did uh, an embossed engraving on here. It came out really nice, much nicer than it looks here on the video. 
Uh, and then we did a several pass cut, which cut through this material super easy. Obviously, it's going to go through paper like nothing. On some standard paper, we burned specifically on this one. Uh, came out great, didn't go too deep through the material, and then we cut out a circle at the end, super quick and easy. We're now moving on to glass, and this is an incredible machine for glass. No marking spray, no nothing. This produced a really cool engraving that has a frosted look directly on it. Uh, you might see some double imaging there. That's because it's passing through and actually engraving the metal business card underneath as well. I put it there so that I wouldn't ruin my bed right off the bat. I then went to cut it, and every piece of glass is different. It might have different uh, compositions in it. Uh, I came very close to cutting this out, so just like with a fiber laser, a UV laser, if you keep going, and particularly if you lower down your focus as you're doing a cut, you will get through. It's just a question of how many passes. Here's a big money maker on the back of a liquid bottle, which has liquid inside of it right now, so I'm not damaging that in any way. Uh, I'm able to engrave directly on the bottle. so. Uh, people are going to be able to come to you for this to be able to give as gifts uh, And I think this is a, uh, a, a great money maker for this laser in particular All right, so what are my thoughts on the com marker Omni one? I recently just launched my Bittner built website and on there you can read my code of conduct when I review units um, I do accept review units. However, I still have to be able to say whatever I need to say truthfully on here um, so that's provided to all of my uh, sponsors and people who provide me with review units. I asked for this one and they sent it out for me, so thank you very much, Commarker. Um, so here is the good and the bad about this machine. Um, the good. It has a wide array of materials that you can use with this machine. And in particular, it is the best for glass. I mean, this is the reason why I asked for this, because everybody's like, the fact that you can engrave so well on this with no marking, with no other prep, just put it right down and go, that is phenomenal. Uh, I know that my wife was just telling me yesterday, she's like, anytime we go to a party now, you are going to engrave that bottle of wine before we go. And that's gonna turn it from, here's a bottle of wine, my friend, to, oh my God, you engrave this, this is amazing. And those reactions are what make you money as somebody who does laser engraving. So if, uh, Laser engraving for money is your thing. You might want to take a look at this for that. Uh, also, leather. Leather, being able to cut and engrave this so cleanly and easily without heat, and that is the big key on this one, makes this a phenomenal laser for leather. Uh, also, plastics, super great on here. Um, and also being able to cut rubber. I wasn't able to show that on here, but like being able to cut rubberized gaskets and things, this laser can do that and no other laser can as well. So those things, this is the Mac Daddy for now. For other items, it still does a really good job. I mean, it is engraving all sorts of materials really well with my coasters, but you're getting markings and light engravings on these products. If you need something really deep, you might need to look at a CO2 or a fiber laser, um, or even a diode in some cases, um, but it still is accomplishing those tasks. So the fact that it can do such a wide array is amazing. Um, some negatives on here, the machine itself constructed very well. Um, I, it's a little bit tricky and it's not actually com markers thing, but when you're doing UV, you can't see half the time where you're plotting. So uh, you have to use this shield and then the shield kind of is in the way and isn't super precise either. So there's a little bit of difficulties on here as far as positioning. So you're going to have to utilize jigs. You're going to have to utilize uh, specific stops on here that correlate to stops in your software in order to line up everything exactly where you want it some of the time. Um, I've gotten a little used to cameras and things that make it so easy. So uh, stepping back a little bit, slight negative. Um, the unit being electric going up and down for focusing, super easy. Um, light burn, very good. Um, not beginner friendly, but if you're used to light burn, no problem here. I would love to see a custom solution for this, of course, uh, but you know, I also didn't get a rotary with this one. Um, they sell the rotary with their 
rotary is definitely necessary. Like this guy right here did a phenomenal job on this one, uh, but I kind of got a little feathering right here because I should have had it on a rotary and I just had it stationary. Um, also, it did a great job on terracotta too. So you're able to engrave on here. So I could totally see you picking up these super cheap, uh, you know, different pots and things. And since it's a Galvo, it can reach down inside of a lip where a uh, gantry base laser would probably hit this. So, you know, another type of material that you can use that's better. Uh, this one is the five watt. It comes in at 3,999. It's all enclosed. It doesn't have a separate machine. It doesn't have a separate chiller. So everything's right here. So it's semi-portable. It is 51 pounds. Um, at that price tag, you are in the best position in a UV laser out there on the market. Um, other lasers of this caliber are up in like the $17,000 range. They might be a little bit more powerful. They might have an enclosure, but this is your opportunity to get in on UV laser engraving, which is what a lot of manufacturers use. I mean, if you see plastic with any sort of writing on it, it's probably a UV laser that placed it on there. If you see really nice glassware with engravings on it, it's probably a UV laser that did it on there as well. So uh, the availability to now at the prosumer level to be able to afford one of these, pretty cool. Well, thank you to Commarker for sending this one out for me. I'm actually gonna use it in another video because I'm going to build an enclosure for it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, safety is paramount for me. My children are using this machine even though they're big men now, they, they're still my children. Um, and so I'm gonna completely enclose this, no glass, nothing inside of a cabinet and then have a baby monitor on the outside so that we can watch it when it's running um, safely without having to worry about anything. So you'll see this in another video coming up. Uh, and also thank you to my boys for helping out on this video. I appreciate it. If you got some good content, I hope you'll like and subscribe. That's what really helps my channel. As always, stay safe in the shop and I'll see you in the next one.